It's been three weeks since your last video. What have you been doing this whole entire time? I think I have a problem. Hello, all you beautiful people. My name is Claude. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Recently, I've been playing through Genshin Impact during my spare time, and to sum up my thoughts on it, basically, I hate that I love it so much. It's such a wonderful game, and I just wanted to make a video talking about what I thought about it. Disclaimer, these are just my thoughts and opinions, and if you want to play a certain way in the game, feel free to do so. Everybody's experience will be different, and these are just one man's thoughts and opinions on it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Genshin Impact was created by the tech-driven company Mahoyo, and it is an open-world hack-and-slash RPG with a focus on character progression and world exploration. Traveling all over the place to find chests, doing quests, and fighting enemies, much like you will see in a lot of games today. Yes, I know the game sounds very familiar to a popular Nintendo game, and yes, it is very much like Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. This game is absolutely beautiful with its locations and areas with an amazing attention to detail. Sometimes I find myself taking in the moment to simply look upon the vast horizons, you know, seeing the cities in the distance and, you know, just exploring all these areas, finding new secrets along the way. The style this game goes for makes it look unique and becomes more memorable the more you explore these locations. I mean, you're scaling mountains, you're traveling through vast open plains. It's never a dull moment where you can just walk out in a random direction, fight some enemies, and collect some treasure. Now, I will say that after a while, you tend to get used to the environment and everything, but I can easily say that you're always going to find something out in the open. Like, for example, you can just find a treasure chest in the most obscure area and end up finding like a luxurious chest in a hidden location. And that sense of discovery is what makes this game so amazing in my book. Now, I don't want to spoil the story too much, but the basic premise is that you, the Traveler, are separated from your twin and are traveling through this unknown world to try to find them, whether it be him or her, depending on which gender you chose. With the help of some Pi and some helping Hans, you'll be able to discover where you are and the people who live in it. Each character has their own unique charm and personality that stands out from one another. Their interactions with your character not only provide help throughout the story, but even through their side quests, may have their own goals, ambitions, makes them fit perfectly into this world that Mahoyo had created. That brings me to the combat. Some of these characters, like Chi Chi, can be brought alongside the Traveler to fight with you, and each character has their own different fighting style and abilities that provide advantages during combat. From Diluc being able to unleash a giant firehawk at enemies, to Chi Chi being able to heal the party by marking an enemy with a talisman, so that way if they are hit by the current's characters attacks they will automatically get healed from that and with this in mind each character that you use will give a new way to fight or even some puzzles to solve i mean even characters that are not good in combat kind of like amber who you know my my second favorite i would say she is not good in combat but she does help solve certain puzzles throughout the overworld my favorite character so far has to be chi chi Go to Mount Tianhong, find the Guizhong Ballista, and hunt a Coco Goat. Please and thank you. Mahoyo, you need to give this kid a Coco Goat! Now let's address the elephant on <laughs> under the room. Now let's address the elephant in the room. As I said, the characters that you have can make the game really enjoyable and provide more variety while playing. But in order to get most of the characters, you need to use Primo Gems or its premium currency for a chance to get them. This is what is considered a gacha game where you obtain a certain amount of currency whether by paying for them directly or getting them through gameplay with a chance to see if you get them through rolls. 
since the game just came out not too long ago, the rates will be terrible. And to get any one particular character will be difficult depending on what banner you choose and how many wishes you do. If you want to spend money for these characters, you can, but as it stands right now, I would advise against it. A lot of games like this eventually have better rates for characters, and sometimes you can even attain these same characters through quests. That being said, you can still do wishes without spending money, strictly through playing the game. And you can still go through the story, the adventure ranks, without spending anything, really. The characters that you're seeing on screen right now are obtained through the free currency and the events. I have not spent a single penny on this game. Mahoyo has been very generous with giving players more opportunities to get primo gems and items that you need to grow your characters to take on the harder content, like the Spiral Abyss, which is a multi-layer dungeon that gets harder each floor, but it gives you rewards, you know, based off of, you know, completing certain requirements, and which is rare to see these kind of games implement, you know, just more ways to get more, well, pretty much wishes or roles for a particular character or banner or even weapon. And I hope they can continue to do this in the future to build up that goodwill in the community. The thing that I have a problem with is the resin system. Basically, you have this set amount of currency that you can use to claim rewards after being bosses or certain dungeons. You get a total of 160 as of the making of this video, and to claim these rewards, you need to spend 20, 40, or sometimes even 60 to obtain these. The game gives you ways to get more resin through fragile resin, which that does restore your know, current usage of it. However, the higher adventure ranks, you'll run out unless you know you save them up over your play time. And waiting for this to recharge takes a long while, several hours even. A shorter recharge time would make this system a bit better, maybe one resin every five minutes, or even just remove the resin cost on certain things, like the things that you need to collect like money or books to upgrade your characters. But this is just a minor nitpick in the grand scheme of things. So overall, despite my concerns with the game, I highly recommend you give it a try. It is definitely worth playing through. It's free on PC, PS4, and mobile devices. The PC version is the best way to play through it. It has much smoother frame rate and loading times. The PS4 version works fine as well, which is the footage that I've been using for this video right now. It has longer load times, and sometimes the textures don't pop in immediately, which that's a minor thing that they can tweak over, over the many months. And I would avoid the phone version because not only does it have constant slowdowns at times, but unless you have a phone with a proper cooling system, it will overheat and make you afraid that it will just melt in your hands. But if you have a phone that can run games like that, go for it. So, now if you excuse me, I need to find something to eat. Where's my emergency food?